Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi. I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today we're going to cover Neil Gaiman's Eternals. He did a fantastic job in these seven issues. He really built up the Eternals mythos. Uh, he told a very compelling story. I love this story. And uh, even though it starts off sort of like in an unoriginal way, but we're going to get into that. Uh, but I got like a really nice surprise at the end. We have art by John Romita Jr. I really love his art. Like I know that his art sometimes can be polarizing. Some people don't like it. At least I really like it. And um, this whole story starts off um, with a situation that we've seen many other times. Uh, I remember seeing the Asgardians go through this, but it, I, it's been done quite a few times. That we have the Eternals are sort of like uh, gods, very similar in a very similar way to the Asgardians or the Olympians. They're, but they're created by the Celestials. And um, they've forgotten who they are. They're living normal human lives. Um, each one are dealing with the situation, having flashes of their past lives as Eternals. Something happens. We ha happened. It's like a big mystery. So Neil Ga Gaiman just really dives into the origins of the Eternals. Look at John Romita Jr.'s art. It's just fantastic. And so the Eternals... That Celestials came to prehistoric Earth, tankered with the human genome, created two offshot races to humanity. The Eternals are very similar to gods. They're immortal, very powerful. They're very perfect in every way. Normal humans, they put a little thing within their genome that's going to allow the um, mutants to pop up way, way down the line. And we have the Deviants, who are like a very basically the demons of Earth. Eternals, humans, and deviants. Well, Eternals actually keep them to themselves, but the deviants um, set out to enslave humanity. Deviants also clashed many times with the Eternals. It's like this big cosmic level science project that the Celestials are doing. Um, the ends to what they're trying to do with this experiment, playing with the humanity, is always like a, this really big mystery what they're going for. I always, I, can, I always have problems remembering the ma names of the main Eternals. This guy here is Icarus. He's like the, the head honcho of the Eternals. Well, not, no, the leader is Zurus. But like he's the Thor of the Eternals. Here's Makari. He's the speedster. Uh, other members of the Eternals. Here we have Cersei. She used to be part of the Avengers. All living human lives. But Icarus already has discovered his powers he's, he has vaguely remembers um mark um he's called mark here but it's makari he's living as a doctor he's trying to convince him he's like hey do you remember we were like these uh super powerful gods and stuff like that and makari just thinks he's crazy another eternal her, her name is stina um uh, the Eternals, um, Icarus and um, Dina cross paths with Hercules during the Secret Invasion for an issue. And that's a pretty fun story, too. If you haven't read it, check out Incredible Hercules, Secret Invasion. Fantastic read, too. We cut from the past to the present. We see the Celestials, how they experimented with humanity, how they chose a group to become the Eternals, these type of gods. Here we have the Deviants, who, when they were created... They set out to enslave humanity. The Eternals tried to keep to themselves, but it reached a moment that they had to bring balance back to Earth. They started going into battle with the, the Deviants. Come back to Earth every once in a while and check out how things were going on. They saw the Deviants actually had overrun and overpopulated the planet. So they basically decided to exterminate as many Deviants as possible. And after this, the, the Eternals set out to be... Um, caretakers of humanity become their gods, teach them how to use fire, how to plant um, agricultural revolution, teach them how to write and stuff like that. Gaiman really takes his time in building up the story about this whole this whole mystery. Icarus gets killed by two uh, deviants. He gets resurrected because if even though if their bodies get destroyed, they get resurrected. They go. Uh, they pop up at the at their main city, Antarctic, and uh, Icarus comes back to life. He completely remembers who he is, and um, 
what we discovered in the story that there's this like young kid prodigy has this television still he's like the justin bieber of the time i don't know if justin bieber is cool anymore <laughs> just remember he was a child star takes makari under his wing and what we discover big spoilers like if you haven't read this please read it it's a fantastic read is that he's one of the eternals his name is sprite and what he did he has illusion casting powers he made the eternals forget who they were and tried to give them um, cer um, a certain level of humanity because what happened is when they were created as the Eternals all were adults except for him he remained as an immortal child and he's really bent out of shape at full for this like he's really pissed off he wants to become a full blown human he wants to be mortal he wants to grow up he wants to have sex he's really pissed off about that too and uh, start, a, start a relationship actually so he has this crazy plan with, I think the Celestial is called the Dreaming Celestial or the Dark Celestial, something like that. Because my editions are in Spanish, so there's all these translation issues and I didn't check it out. But he has this really crazy plan with the Celestial that the Celestial has always been, I don't know much about his mythos, but he's always seemed to be like bad news for the world. Like if he, if the Celestial wakes up, like it's like always a world ending uh, issue. Celestial in particular seems to be the one responsible for creating the Deviants. So, as the story goes on, the Eternals start waking up. The Dreaming Celestial actually comes back. Um, actually, what happens is, uh, this Dreaming Celestial chooses, because prior to this, there's an Eternal called Ajax. He was the one that was the go-to man to talk to Celestials. The Dreaming Celestial wants to work with Makari. He becomes like the... <laughs> liaison to <laughs> to the celestials tells tells Macari's like the world between inhumans and deviants has to end and actually establishes that something very important is coming down the line the horde like this they're like these intergalactic uh, space locusts that are the arch enemies of the celestials they're, they're like the embodiment of entropy the Dreaming Celestial tells them, it's like, we have to prepare. They're on their way. Eternals have to end their war with the Deviants. But the really good part of the story that, for me, was the best part, because we get, like, this final battle between the Deviants and the Eternals, where actually Makari says, look, no bloodshed. We have to be friends. There's something really big coming towards Earth. We have to work together. Is actually the moment Zurus tracks down Sprite because of what he did. And this this line of dialogue where Zurus tells him, like, you really fucked up, kid, and you're going to have to pay the price. Like, this is the price of mortality. You're not going to grow up. You're not going to become adult. Like, this writing is freaking good. Like, I've been really sloppy with it, trying to tell you guys the story because there's a lot on the table. And he breaks the kid's neck. Like, you're not, like, you screwed us over. You're not going to become an adult. And he kills him. And, oh, man, that's, this part, this three pages this is why i read comic books when you every once in a while you'll get one of these really really well written stories so hope you guys read this there's also an ongoing eternal series that was really good so sadly it didn't last too long so hope you guys like this video see you guys next time